Hi, I'm Sage Jensen. And I'm Marley Reeves. And we'll be talking about classifying user locations using geotemporal data. Understanding human mobility can help public health, city planning, and crime reduction. Identifying the type of locations people travel to is a critical step towards this understanding. Therefore, we seek to use user-supplied locational data as well as the movement of people to identify and classify locations. The first step in this process is collecting data that is both a location and a timestamp. We use the Twitter API to collect tweets from the Manhattan area over a one-month period. We then filtered out bots to ensure the accuracy of our data. This video shows the movement of filtered users over the course of one day. You can clearly see activity of the city wax and wane as people wake up, go to work, tweet about their coffee, and go to sleep. Next, using a density-based clustering algorithm, we clustered clouds of points into specific locations. You can see in this image clusters plotted in different colors as well as unclustered points plotted with black X's. We use these locations combined with user trajectories to create a weighted directed network. Nodes in this graph represent locations and edges represent travel frequency. By running a community detection algorithm, we were able to observe a structure similar to that of the districts in Manhattan, as seen in the different colors of the graph. Now that we have the location and movement data, we extracted the features to be used by the classifier for each location. We used the timestamps of the tweets within each location to create both a popular times and a popular day histogram. Additionally, we extracted features from the complex network, including node degree and the local clustering coefficient. Now we want to label the data. We tried several different data sets, including Foursquare, Google API, and the content of the tweet. Our first attempt at classification used semi-supervised learning. We confidently labeled several points with Foursquare data and then spread those labels to the rest of the points. Here's a confusion matrix with our results. In order to better understand the activity associated with the locations, we used unsupervised learning to cluster the locations into groups and then perform tweet analysis. The text analysis reveals several large clusters and several smaller clusters. The smaller clusters relate to specific events, such as Derek Jeter's last game in Yankee Stadium or the People's Climate March. Larger clusters represent different types of activities within the city, New York Fashion Week, Times Square, museums, or parties. You can see the popular times of each class of location in this video. Note how each color seems to come in waves. This represents the peak time at which this class is most popular during the day. In conclusion, we have shown that hourly and daily histograms provide insight into location classification. An advantage of our approach is that locations don't need to be known a priori. We'd like to thank the BioComplex Lab, Amalfia REU, FIT, and the NSF for this research opportunity. Thank you for watching.